Hi everyone, today we are back to our Rooms of Wonder page and we have a butterfly or moth, I'm not sure which, um, on our magical page. So I'm trying to work out how we can make him look, him, her, look a bit more magical. But let's start by doing the body. I thought we could do it a little bit silvery. So we're going to use some cold greys and uh, see how we get on. So polychromos, as we have been for all this page, cold grey six. Now if we look at the body, Johanna's drawn some lines here, 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 which indicates to me that needs to be a little bit darker. It might be that she's trying to show that it's a bit furry, but I'm going to use it as an indication of shading so I'm putting a little bit of colour there but just just fading it a bit on the edge so that we can mix it in with our next colour so what's that that was cold grey six um, I think we'll go down to cold grey four we'll go down in sort of increments and we'll extend this darker area down a little bit but just fade it now, fade it right off and I'm going to come under here with a bit and take the colour up and try and fade it fairly quickly so we can have a little white shine line not on the edge of the body but sort of just towards the centre a little bit so it looks a little bit shiny I'm just tidying it up really there we go. And the head the same, so I probably only use this colour to be honest. So go around the edge of the head in quite an intense layer, so layering it up. And then as we come towards the middle, reducing the colour so it's quite light in the centre, if not white, right in the middle, like that and that not only makes it look slightly silvery but it makes it look rounded oh there's a fly in here and uh, here I'm going to take that darker colour there and here I want it under there as well like a bit of shadow like we're in a bit of a layer but leave a little bit of white in the middle just to continue with our sort of slightly shiny silvery theme and the same here, so I want a dark bit all the way across on each end and then fade it towards the middle and leave a tiny bit of white and again. Here I don't want a white right at the bottom, just in the centre, like that. So there is the body of our little magical bug and butterfly. Now, I'm trying to think, you know, are there magical colours? Do we do lots of mad colours? Do we do it... Hmm. Do we do it gold to make it look like it's metallic and magical in that sense? Um, hmm. Or do we do it brightly coloured? Hmm. I'm thinking... Hmm. I'm thinking gold. That's what I'm thinking. So let's go down the gold route. So let's start with a dark brown. Just looking at what I've got. Uh, I think probably the burnt umber is a good place to start. Now, with this I need to think about the areas I want darkest to make my shiny gold, but also where there would be shadow, which would also make sense for it to be dark. So in here, against the body but I want to fade quite quickly here I don't want it too dark there and the same is symmetrical so the same here the reason I don't want it too dark here is because under here Johanna's drawn some dots as if this should be much darker and take that dark all the way along because there will be shadow under this wing and then just sort of fade it out a little bit by scumbling along the edge. Okay. So again the same. So nice and dark along the body. And underneath this wing. Just checking you can see. 
sudden paranoia. I don't know why you wouldn't suddenly be able to see, but yeah. And then scumble it down. So just a circular motion. So we've got a looser area of pencil. Now you could do this as separate to this, but I think I'm going to leave it as just two wings. But we want some dark colour on the ends as well. So just on the tips, not right in. Now I am going to ignore Johanna's pan. Um, it will show through because the pencils it's fairly see-through. It'll make it too complicated for me otherwise. Okay, so there is our darkest colour. You can make it even darker. You can start with black if you want, but that isn't the way I do it. I am going to make it slightly reddish by using a burnt sienna next. It's not how I normally do it. But basically, I'm going to extend these areas going over those parts that I did loosely and then extending my colour a little bit like that. Now if you find when you've finished that the areas that you wanted really dark aren't dark enough you can go over them again either with your dark pencil or even with a black or a dark sepia. So I'm not going to worry if my shadow disappears because I know that I can bring it back if I want it. So we're just extending that a little bit. Now this colour is quite reddish but there isn't much of it so I don't know if it's going to make a big difference. That's my ring on the desk. Um, I think we're going to go in with the brown ochre next. There we go, brown ochre. And we go over most of it. Just keep bringing that colour in towards the centre of each wing. It's quite a simple and relaxing process. It does take time to build up the colours to make um, the gold. You can do it easily by just using the green gold in heavier and lighter layers this gives you a better effect. If I've only got a really small area I want to make gold, I just use the one colour. With silver, I'm the same. You can use several greys or with blues and blacks, or you can just use one. Now we're going for the green gold. Um, what I found actually, I was... I was using my... Um, Prismas and no, my Castle Art, sorry, and I found the Cold Grey Deep, I think it's called, is a really lovely colour for making silver. You can just use it on its own and it makes the most amazing looking silver, which was interesting. Better than any of the polychromos pencils would look on their own. I was uh, quite amazed, interested, and happy as well. I can't remember what I was colouring with them. Oh, it was in this book. You may have seen the video. It was the um, wizard's room. I did some grey things. And uh, yeah, I was really pleased. Okay, the dark Naples ochre. Whoops, let's hold it out. Camera shot. Uh, I'm not sure if you can read it. Light is very tricky. Now we're getting to the point where we we can start to think about leaving a bit of shine soon. You could just leave it like that and it looks shiny, but I find it's better to leave a smaller space. So we'll have one more yellow. And I tend to go up to my cadmium yellows, although I think I'll use this one. Oops, this is the, yeah, this is the light cadmium yellow. There you go. 
um, and I tend to go over all of it with my last colour because it's a much brighter colour than the others so it just adds a little bit of brightness. Now we want some white left but not too much. I find it's a fine balance. Now this bit's going to be at the bottom of my white, our shine. I think I might just put a tiny bit of yellow along the bottom just uh, so that it's not white right on the edge. I keep I'm forgetting to colour the whole thing in this. And there we go. I've finished now. I'm just tidying it up. Whoops. I always get my sleeve caught in the pencils. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my dark sepia and just do the shadows a little bit more. So in here and along there, just I want a really sharp edge. It just and I will put it there too and under there excuse me there we go there and there he is our golden magical magical moth I think is a nice uh, I've called him butterfly on my piece of paper but I'm gonna say magical moth so there he is so thank you for watching again a little bit short today but um it's, uh, I'm trying to sort of catch up with um, video making, so there might be a few short ones for a while, but I hope that was fun for you, and uh, I am getting through the page, we will get them all done, which will be great, so thank you for watching for now, enjoy your day, and happy colouring!